Hi there, welcome back to My Hot Kitchen. I'm Wendy, and our show is all about having fun with cooking, romance, and bringing the two together for a romantic date night at home that you won't forget. Tonight's romantic feast is started off Bianca Zucchini Crostini's chicken schnitzel with a mushroom reduction, lemon caper schweitzel, and roasted carrots. So the very first thing that we're gonna get started on is the zucchini. You wanna give it a couple minutes to marinate and sort of start to break down. So I'm gonna cut the zucchini on the long thin strips on the bias, and then we'll marinate them in herbs and vinegar, and they'll be yummy on top of the little crostinis. So take your sliced zucchini minus the stem and the end, Drop them in a big bowl. Douse them with a little white wine vinegar. And then a little pinch of rosemary and a nice generous pinch of basil. Toss them together. Let the herbs and the vinegar coat all the surfaces of the zucchini. And add a little salt and pepper at this time too if you like. Now the vinegar is going to go to work on the zucchini and soften it up a little bit. It's kind of like cooking it, but without actually cooking. Set this off to the side, and then it's time to slice up bread. So the type of bread that you're going to want to use is probably going to be like a French bread. And it's okay if it's a little bit on the old side. It's actually a very great recipe that will use old stale bread beautifully. So I'm going to cut nice thin slices, and I'm going to cut about five each for us, so a total of ten. Alrighty, and then spread them out, because the next thing you're going to do is cover them with a little olive oil and garlic. So then take a clove of garlic and a little bit of olive oil, maybe a couple ounces at most, and ideally crush the garlic into the olive oil. And I recommend the crushing for this recipe because it's more pungent. Typically you'll see me um, actually going through and chopping the garlic or using chopped garlic and that's generally because I like the smoother flavor in cooked dishes but in a dish like this the crushing activates all the oils in the garlic and makes it really pungent and delicious so mix them together and then brush the olive oil on the bread You don't need to douse them, just a light little brushing will do the trick. Just want to give the bread something to caramelize with when you put it in the toaster. And then flip them over and treat the other sides. These toasty little breads are going to be so yummy when they're done have just the right mix of crispness and savoriness, garlickiness, oh, yum yum. Every time I eat a little crostini like this, I always think of parties that I've been to in the past that were lots of fun. All right, well this part is done, so now we're gonna put these in the toaster. Take this whole thing over here with me. What you're going to do is just lightly toast them, make sure they're nice and crisp and light in texture, but not so dry that they crumble. You want to find that right balance here. Now you'll see I'm using a toaster oven, which is the best option, but if you don't have a toaster oven, a broiler on a really low temperature would do the same trick. Alrighty, these are perfect. Go ahead and get those out of there before they start burning. Nice and golden brown. Nice and crusty. 
crusty little crostinis. All right, let's take these back over to the counter and decorate them up. Lay them all out flat so you can work with them. And then while they cool down, go ahead and mix, your, mix up your cheese. So I have goat cheese here, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and mix it into whatever is left of my olive oil and garlic. I'm also gonna add a little pinch of chives to it. And you can also use cream cheese for this or a spreadable Swiss cheese. I happen to really enjoy goat cheese because of its pungency and its versatility. And as you work it, kind of like butter, it'll become softer. You'll have the best luck with this recipe if you work with the goat cheese at room temperature. All right, take a little dab of the yumminess and brush it across the toast. Does not have to be perfect. Just a nice little dab drawn across the surface will do the trick. And handle them gently because the crostinis get more fragile when they're toasted. Oh, these are gonna taste so good. The freshness of the zucchini, the pungency of the goat cheese, the garlic in there to blend all the flavors together. Your sweetie is gonna really dig on this. And then if you have a little left, just go back over and fill in any that look a little lean. All right, and you'll see that I have actually placed the crostinis on a little baking sheet here. And that's because they're gonna go back into the toaster. I'm gonna take my zucchini that's been sitting there for a little bit and put it on top of the crust. On top of the crusty crostinis. You should try saying crusty crostinis several times fast. It's challenging. These are gonna be so good. All right. A little bit more salt and pepper on the top. Just try to hit the zucchini, really. I'm gonna just add that extra little pop of flavor. And a little garnish on top. Pepper always looks pretty on top of food, I think. And then, back into the toaster oven. Then toast them for just a few more minutes. Just enough time to soften up the zucchini. Well, these look like they're done to me now. I know that my sweetie is hungry. I can't wait to share them. Well, don't these look scrumptious? Ooh, and they are kind of hot too. They smell so good. You can smell the vinegar and the zucchini and the garlic all working together. It's a lovely aroma. These are ready. Mmm, this smells good in here. Mm-hmm. Wow, look at this. Appetizer for you. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Hey. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Go ahead and have a little appetizer. Okay. Alrighty, I've got some melted butter here and I'm gonna mix it with a clove of garlic. It is time to roast the carrots. And the whole reason that we are even melting the butter is so that it evenly coats the carrots while they're still cold. To this lovely garlic butter mixture, go ahead and add a generous amount of chives. Place the carrots in a baking pan. I'm using these nice, pretty, fresh carrots. These are like the first crop that came out of the ground this year, it looks like. I say that because they're just the right size for this dish. Not too big, not too small. I am using the carrots with the skins on because I like the flavor and the texture that comes from it. And also I like the vitamins. Just gonna toss them to coat them. Sprinkle a little sugar over them. Just about a teaspoon's worth. It's gonna help them to caramelize, give them a nice tasty sweet glaze. 
and then these are ready to go in the oven. You want to take a low and slow philosophy with the carrots. I've got my oven set at 325 degrees. I'm thinking they're going to need to roast for about 45 minutes to an hour. Next thing to get started on is the spätzle. So the first thing that I'm going to do is mix together my flour and my dry ingredients. I have a cup and a half of all-purpose flour here. Add to that a nice generous pinch of fresh parsley that you've minced up nice and fine, a quarter teaspoon baking powder, half teaspoon of salt, and about a teaspoon of delicious paprika. Whisk this together until you have a nice uniform, even looking consistency. You want to do this so that you work out the lumps in the flour and also so that you blend the leavenings and the salt all the way into the flour. Alrighty, and the next step is to beat the eggs. I've got two eggs here and I'm going to beat them until they are nice and lemony looking. Room temperature eggs are going to be your best bet for this job. Make sure you remove any particles of shell that may have fallen into the egg. Spätzle is not supposed to be crispy and crunchy. So, here we are beating the eggs. Want to thoroughly mix them so that the whites and yolks are as one, and work a little air into them as well. And then, once you have the eggs looking lemony and yummy, Go ahead and add a half cup of water. Continue whisking until you have a nice even appearance. And then, that's right, you guessed it, mix it all together. Make sure you get all the egg and water in there. Whisk it until you see that all the lumps are out and you have a nice, fun, dumpling-like consistency. So spätzle is a fun, traditional Germanic side dish has kind of a gummy texture. It's very satisfying to eat. Uh, somewhere between a pasta and a dumpling. An excellent accompaniment to schnitzel. You want to see it pour off in kind of big clumps like that, but almost ribbon-like. That is perfect and ready to go. And then once you see you've got the nice consistency that you want, go ahead and zest a whole lemon into the operation. Traditionally, schnitzel is served with lemon and capers. Well, that's one of the traditions anyway. So I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and incorporate those flavors into the side dish since we're doing the mushroom reduction on the schnitzel. You just want to harvest the yellow part once you start going down into the white, it starts to get bitter and it doesn't really taste like lemon anymore. Oh, you can smell the oils being released from the lemon. The peel is what harvests most, most of the flavor from the lemon. The juice has some flavor too, but you really get that strong, pungent, lemony flavor from the zest. And that goes for all citrus fruits, actually. Make sure I got it all off of my grater. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix this in as well. Alrighty, and it looks like our water is just about ready. Alrighty, so once the water reaches a falling boil, you can reduce the temperature to medium high heat. Give it a little stir if you need to to cool it down. What you're looking for is a nice low simmer. So test it all out by just drizzling a couple drops off of your whisk. And what you're looking for is for the spätzle to sort of start rising up to the surface. Just like that. Go ahead and skim those off. So I'm going to be using a colander with large holes in it to extrude the spätzle, and then I'm using a fine mesh colander to sort of drain them off when they're done. So what you want to do is just scoop a nice big spoonful of this yumminess into your colander and scrape it down. 
what you're gonna get is little fun bite-sized pieces of yumminess. Work in small batches when you're doing this. Don't add any more until that first batch is fully cooked and all floating on the surface. Use a clean spoon to skim them off. Remember you're working with eggs here, so you wanna make sure that you don't mix up your dirty spoon with your clean spoon. These are fun. I love all the different shapes that you get out of it. They're just so random. Next batch. Alrighty, here is the last batch that I'm pulling out of my little simmering water pot here. There are a few other ways that you can go about making the spätzle. One of the ways is that you could use a food mill. Again, work in really small batches. A potato ricer would probably do a good job too. And then if you want, you can painstakingly drip it off the end of a spoon or a whisk. The whole point is to get it to fall off into little droplets into the simmering water so that you get these fun little shapes. Alrighty, I'm gonna wash my hands really quick before we take care of the last step, since I was just working with some raw egg. All right, so the final step in this preparation of the spätzle is just toss them with a little bit of butter or olive oil. This will help to keep them from sticking together. And make sure they're ready to go when you are. Excellent. Got to have one. Mm. <laughs> mm. The brightness of the lemon and the parsley and the paprika are all playing off each other beautifully. You're really gonna like that. All right, well now it is time to talk about schnitzel. So what we are gonna do is start by pounding out our chicken. So traditionally you would use a chicken breast, but I thought it'd be a fun to do a little adaptation with chicken tenders. Now since they're so small, they're not gonna need much pounding at all, but it's just not schnitzel unless you pound it out. And the reason you pound it out is that you get a nice even thickness and a perfectly fried coating. So I'm gonna lay these all out here. And then I'll put another piece of wax paper on top. You can use wax paper, saran wrap, Parchment paper would do the job too. Just something to separate them out, hold them in place, and not muck up your tool that you are using to flatten them out. Traditionally, most people would use a meat mallet for this, but I don't really care for meat mallets because they only have one use in the kitchen. A rolling pin has many uses, and it does the job just as well. Now, if these were full-size chicken breasts, that would have been a lot harder. But they're just little chicken tenderloins, so that was an easy thing to do. Now they're all nice and evenly thick. It's time to move on to the next step. So it's gonna take a classic breading here. We're gonna do flour, an egg, and then breadcrumbs. In order to do that, I will need to break this egg and whip it up. It doesn't have to be quite as well mixed as it was for the spätzle, but just about. It's okay if you see a little separation between yolk and white. It will get the job done just fine. 
And the next thing to do is to incorporate some flavor into the breadcrumbs. So I have about a tablespoon of paprika here. I'm going to mix it into my breadcrumbs. Also a nice generous amount of salt and pepper. You want to remember that the chicken is only going to have a thin coating of the breadcrumbs on it, so feel free to season it up quite liberally. And when you give it a little taste, it should taste pretty salty. Mmm, mm, that's yummy. That'll get the job done. And then the next step is to go ahead and take your tenders and dunk them in flour. And then the egg. And then the breadcrumbs. Make sure you get all the sides, all the little nooks and crannies. All right. So the flour prepares the chicken for the egg, which prepares the chicken for the breadcrumbs. It's a nice little trio of duties that these three ingredients have. And this is a great way to bread anything that you're going to be frying or baking. You can season it up how you like. And you can make it as thick as you like. Once you are satisfied that they're coated, you're ready to pull them out and move on to the next step, which is get a little butter really happy over here in your saute pan. Got a couple tablespoons. Want to hear a nice happy little sizzle when you drop it in there. That's how you know you're at the right temperature for optimum butter frying. Get it all melted. All swirled around in there. And that smells nice. When it is 90% melted, you can go ahead and start adding in the yummy little schnitzels. Give them a little slide around, make sure that butter has the opportunity to coat the entire surface of the bottom. And it's probably just going to take about two to three minutes per side for perfection. Alrighty, these guys are ready for a flip. Nice and crispy on one side, just turning golden brown. It's really important that when you're frying with butter in a manner like this, that you carefully monitor the temperature. It's pretty common to find yourself tweaking the temperature up and down just a little bit. Just want to hear that subtle sizzle. That's how you know when the butter's in its happy place and is making your food taste the best. Give the chicken a little tilt-a-whirl ride just to make sure that all that butter is soaked up by the breading. Let them finish off. All right, but you don't want to let the pan sit around for too long because you're going to need it to make that delicious mushroom reduction. So get these guys out of the pan quickly and put it back on the heat. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more butter in there. There's already some in there, so I'm not going to need to add it all. About an eighth of an onion that I've sliced up into really thin slices. One clove of minced garlic. And some mushroom wedges. About two to three medium mushrooms. Give this a little toss. should see the mushrooms catching some of the flavor and turning kind of a golden brown color. Go ahead and add a couple ounces of white wine. Make sure that heats up nice and high. 
cook off most all of the liquids. Alrighty, I'm just gonna let that sit while I get the rest of the dinner plate ready. Place those on top of the chicken. Sprinkle some capers over the spätzle. A little bit of goat cheese or feta cheese sprinkled over the top of the chicken. And just to keep the tradition alive, a little lemon. These babies are ready to go on the table. Nice job! You just whipped up another amazing feast for you and your sweetie. So enjoy this evening together. Enjoy it with a nice Riesling or a Gewürztraminer or a Mueller Tergau for the best match. Call in your sweetie. A feature say in a friend. Mmm. That's delicious. Mm. This is such a hot <laughs> So thanks for joining me in my hot kitchen tonight. Hot kitchen. Have fun turning up the heat in your kitchen, and I'll see you next week. Night-night. <laughs>